sneak in there close so they can tell you're smiling. Okay. Today we're talking all about the difficulty of communicating with masks. Hit it. Hit what? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Squires. And I'm Dr. Carly Squires. And this is Dr. Squires Squared. This is a channel where we have candid and casual conversations about anything audiology. And if you're not sure what audiology is, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, hit our notifications bell, and we'll tell you everything you'll need to know. Okay everybody, today we're talking mm -hmm. about the difference in being able to communicate with a mask and without. Yeah, it's a big difference. So what are the things that we're noticing um, <laughs> throughout this, <laughs> throughout this <laughs> pandemic? That's what we all right now. Just what are the things that we're noticing throughout this pandemic is that people continuously talk to us about the difficulty that they're experiencing while other people are wearing masks. Right. Um, I think we were not, we weren't t focused on a few different um, aspects of that, but we'll start with just the obvious. Our mouth is covered up. Yeah. So it really um, creates difficulty, obviously, because you can't see someone's mouth. This is for people who may have a hearing loss and, and then maybe not. My hearing is normal, but I mean, I look at people's mouths when they talk and then just just all those visual cues help you um, to just decipher what's being said. And then imagine if you have a reduction in your hearing and you really rely on those visual cues to piece together what is said. Absolutely. I mean, you know, our brain is designed to help us use every available mm -hmm. resource that we have, mm -hmm. mainly to stay alive, but not so much anymore. Now we use it so much more for just moving around our environments mm -hmm. and communication. And when we take that visual aspect away, um, whether you're lip reading or just like to see people smile, mm -hmm. um, it makes things very difficult. Yeah, and then along those same lines, um, I, I can think of just two examples I wanna share. I had a patient, um, a relative of a patient that was here the other day that works in the school system and just expressing um, how being in a school where you can't see the kids' faces, it just, it's just um, upsetting because we can't see our emotions as much. Yep. Um, and I, I think that's a big factor in it too, not just the lip reading, but just the emotional side of things. I mean, we go out and about and if we smile at someone, they can't even see that we're smiling. I mean, we've literally said out loud, I just smiled at <laughs> I you. you. I don't know if you can this, tell. But... Yeah, and then the other day I had a patient that um, he came in and he saw um, a picture of me out in the waiting room. I've seen him three times now throughout his um, hearing journey. And he's like, I finally saw your face. And it kind of just made me sad because we're covering that up a little bit right now. Yep, yep. So from a nonverbal perspective, perspective, mm -hmm. the masks are really tough. Mm -hmm. But a second thing to think about is just what it actually does to the sound that comes out of our mouth. Yeah. Um, you know, it masks or any type of um, heavier fabric or anything like that are going to diminish the, the higher pitches, the higher mm -hmm. frequency or the quality of those high pitches mm -hmm. in our speech. So it's going to make everybody sound like they're mumbling. Mm -hmm. And for somebody with a hearing loss, specifically a, a high frequency hearing mm -hmm. loss, it already sounds like people are mumbling um, if that hearing loss is untreated. So the added factor of the mask makes it even more difficult. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked about what a mask can do in terms of the projection of your voice and then also covering up your mouth and so people cannot lip read. But let's talk a little bit about social distancing too and what happens when we back up from each other um, with our communication. Yeah, it's actually one of the common tests that we do just to see um, if somebody's hearing aids are working to the degree that we think they should be is, is you know, talking to them and backing up. Um, we use what's called the inverse square law and for every doubling of distance, the sound level if it doesn't change at the source, mm -hmm. will drop six decibels. So what that means is average conversational speech can drop to uh, the intensity of a whisper mm -hmm. very quickly as you're backing up. Mm -hmm. So what you'll find oftentimes is that when people recognize the distance, they raise their voice. But what happens with a mask over top of the mm -hmm. face is it automatically reduces that from the get-go. This is why social distancing is so difficult for people with um, difficulty hearing is because there's, it, there's multiple factors at play. Absolutely. So you start backing up, you know, six feet is, six feet is great, but 
what happens for people who don't feel even comfortable at six feet and they back out to eight feet or yeah. 10 feet mm -hmm. um, or even 12 feet, that yeah. that sound level drops very, very yeah. quickly. And then you've got the mask on, so that we just talked about that. So you can see where for someone who even has normal hearing, right? basically what social distancing and the mask is creating are essentially creating a little bit of a hearing loss for everybody, mm -hmm. um, especially those who already have that underlying hearing loss. So. Speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about some communication strategies that we can all use to work together to get through this and make sure that we can hear each other and communicate a little bit easier. Um, obviously, we want to stick to the social distancing. So let's go out and say that this doesn't mean don't social distance. Let's still keep our distance. Let's wear those masks. Let's get through this. Um, but what can we do while we're you know, using those practices to help things along? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost is just just awareness, mm -hmm. uh, having awareness that the people that you might be talking to may or may not have a hearing loss, but mm -hmm. it's likely that they're going to have difficulty understanding. I mean, right. we've all tried to go and do something and then would said, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're saying because mm -hmm. you have a mask on. Right, right. So just having a general awareness about the difficulty mm -hmm. of communication, communicating with these masks, I think is, is a big thing. Yeah. But beyond that, some things that you can do is, um, just make a conscious effort to speak up a little bit mm -hmm. just to try to overcome that barrier um, and keeping in mind that louder isn't always clearer yeah. um so yeah. making a conscious effort to enunciate yeah. and, and even it may seem silly but try to almost exaggerate your speech a little bit like i'm doing right now to space out what you're saying slow it down enunciate so that whoever you're communicating with has a much better chance to piece it all together and also a little bit more time to process what was said. Well, and I think that exaggerating your speech, um, you know, and, and if there's any speech pathologists out there, mm -hmm. I'm willing to chime in on the comment section. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Or you can come and be a guest. Even better. Podcast. Even better. <laughs> anyway. But while wearing a mask, if you're exaggerating your you know, mm -hmm. the, the motions with your mouth, it helps to keep that fabric out of the way and helps mm -hmm. to create the distinction between speech. Um, that is really what the ear picks up on. You know, our ears work with timing and intensity mm -hmm. cues. So if those are kind of replaced with that exaggeration, it makes such a big difference. So um, pretend like you're a cartoon or a puppet mm -hmm. and speak very distinctly and slowly mm -hmm. and raise your voice a little bit and everything will get better. Yes. <laughs> you want to end it? Sure. Okay. Well, thanks for sticking with us throughout this, uh, this episode about communication with masks. We realize that mask social distancing, the pandemic in general, has created some barriers, which is part of the reason why we started this podcast. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate your support. Make sure to hit that like button. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And of course, if you have any questions for us, um, leave a comment for us. Send us an email at info at herewv.com or give us a call at the office, 304-428-2403. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.